No college football team in America has made the strides the Clemson Tigers have in the last eight seasons. A program that at one time termed a break-even season successful has reached the level of the heavyweights of America. ACC titles and national television appearances, All-Americans, a national championship, are all in the glossary of terms describing Clemson football. The Clemson class of 1984 had a lot to do with this tradition and success. Although the 84 season was not the most successful, it had its bright moments and excitement. A few plays in the right places would have kept the season on a par, if not better, than the previous years. Clemson began its 89th season of football in friendly Death Valley, where the Tigers have won over 70% of their games. Clemson entered the contest ranked number four in the nation and riding an eight-game winning streak. The Clemson defense and special teams made a big difference early. Here, freshman Dwayne Meadows gets his career off to a great start with a sack of App State quarterback Randy Joyce. Clemson's greatest punter of all time, Dale Hatcher, pinned the Mountaineers at the three-yard line with this boomer. Then, the Clemson defense took over. William Perry and Steve Berlin combined to tackle a running back and quarterback on this play and give the Tigers two points. It was a 5-0 Clemson lead. The Tigers increased their lead to 12-0 in the second period. With a first down at the Appalachian State 13, Steve Griffin got the call and followed the almost perfect blocking of Reed Engel and Steve Reese to score his first collegiate touchdown. Only a few possessions later, the offense was at it again. Mike Epley to Terrence Rulak was an overused combination in the minds of Clemson opponents in 1984, and they combined for their first touchdown of the season on this 11-yard score. Terrence Mack, Clemson's gifted sophomore banded end, led the defense this day with two interceptions as he continued to show why he is one of the most versatile athletes on the team. Virginia was supposed to finally have a chance to beat Clemson for the first time since Thomas Jefferson founded the university. It was the season opener for the Cavs and one of their largest opening crowds was in attendance. Clemson was apprehensive Despite a number three national ranking, Clemson teams had won the second game of the season only four times in the last 20 seasons. Mike Epley wanted to end that jinx in a hurry as he came out throwing. The senior went over 2,000 yards passing in his career in the first half as he found sophomores Ray Williams and Terrence Rulak for long touchdown passes. The duo combined for 10 catches totaling 184 yards and a pair of touchdowns. William Perry's high school teammate, Kenny Danforth, joined select company as he scored a touchdown the first time he laid his hands on the football with his 22-yard interception return. The supposed nail-biter had developed into a laugher, and the 55 to nothing score had people buzzing about Clemson's national championship chances. It was a victory that became increasingly impressive as the season advanced. The Wahoos went to their first bowl ever in 1984. The Clemson-Georgia game received as much attention as the upcoming battle between Mondale and Reagan. The only difference was the competitors in this election were telling the public how great the other candidate was. Both presidents Ford and Dooley knew what they were talking about. The Clemson-Georgia game had been decided by a total of six points in the last seven meetings, and this was to be no exception. The number two ranked Tigers looked to be just that on their second possession, driving 58 yards in seven plays. Mike Epley connected with all ACC tight end KD Dunn on this 16-yard touchdown as the Georgia native showed his desire to reach pay dirt. The secondary did its job and then some in the first half as each starter picked off a Todd Williams pass. 
None set up touchdowns, however, as Clemson was also having its own problems in holding on to the ball. With four minutes to go before halftime, the Tiger offense exploded. Terrence Flagler, one of three Terrences on the Clemson team with a propensity for the big play, showed his athletic ability on this leaping catch. A minute later, Donald Igwebuike, a third-team All-American in 1984, booted this 43-yard field goal to give Clemson a 20-6 lead. Georgia came back strong in the second half and tied the game at 23, thanks in part to this Herman Archie reception, and they took the lead on a 60-yard field goal by Kevin Butler. Danny Ford did not give up after this apparent act of God and designed this wild lateral play on the ensuing kickoff. The play took 10 seconds to run, and it appeared the Tigers would have time for a 37-yard field goal to tie the game. There was one second left. But officials ruled the clock had expired before a penalty on Georgia. And Clemson was saddled with its first daytime defeat in 33 games. The Tigers had to return to the state of Georgia and meet a fired up Georgia Tech team the following week, a team that was ranked in the top 20 for the second time in 10 years. The disappointment of Kevin Butler's miracle kick hung with the Tigers in the first half, and Clemson trailed by 20 at halftime. Ronald Watson, who had 17 tackles in the game, helped settle the Clemson defense down, allowing the offense to mount a comeback. Stacy Driver was the ringleader, and he had a career-high 131 yards on the day. Richard Butler got the Tigers on the board with this 25-yard TD reception, the first of his career. On the next drive, Clemson continued the furious comeback as Charlotte, North Carolina sophomore Steve Griffin followed a great block by Dale Swing, cut against the grain, and scored on a play that would have counted in touch football. Clemson scored again to tie the game. But a final drive by the Yellow Jackets put a damper on what would have been Clemson's greatest second-half comeback victory in history. The Jackets scored with just 33 seconds remaining and Clemson's 21-game unbeaten streak against ACC teams had come to an end. Teams of less character could have folded their tents at this juncture of the season. Instead, Danny Ford's team went on a camping trip in Yellowstone National Park at the expense of five Southern rivals. North Carolina was the first victim, and defense was the name of this game. William Perry had one of his greatest games ever with 12 tackles three for loss, and a fumble recovery. North Carolina native Mike Epley had never lost to the Tar Heels in football, and he was not about to start this day. Here, he picked up 23 yards on a fine option play. With North Carolina leading 6-3, Epley dropped back to pass and unloaded a bomb to the fleet Terrence Rulak. It's a 76-yard touchdown, the longest of the season for the Tigers, and Clemson is back in the lead. It's now time for the William Perry Show. On three consecutive plays, he took over the game. Here is Art Ekman's call of those plays. This time, William Perry. his second behind the line of scrimmage tackle in this ball game. Anthony calling the signals at quarterback. The young sophomore gives it to Horton once again and there he is again. William Perry. The young sophomore quarterback Anthony goes to Horton out of the backfield. They're using their finest weapon and William Perry gets over there to make the tackle. Look at the lateral speed and quickness of William Perry. That is why William Perry led the nation in tackles for loss per game in 1984. Clemson scored the decisive touchdown on this fine run by Kenny Flowers, who followed the downfield block of Shelton Boyer to pay dirt. 
The 20-12 Clemson win was the ninth Tiger victory over the Tar Heels in the last 12 years and the 21st straight Tiger triumph in front of 60,000 fans or more. October 20th is a special day in Clemson football history, for it was the anniversary of the first Clemson home game. What a perfect day to have a homecoming game. The Greeks, who developed the calendar many years ago, did not plan it this way, but 81,000 Tiger fans were happy at the way it worked out. This was a team win for the Tigers over an undermanned Duke team. Four different players completed passes in the game, the first time that has happened in 15 years, as Mike Epley, Anthony Peretti, and Stacy Driver all completed touchdown passes. For Driver, it was his first collegiate attempt. The running game was also in high gear, as Steve Griffin showed in this 60-yard run, thanks to a block by Terrence Rulak. Rulak had the finest game of his career, blocking and catching the football as he snared five passes for 129 yards and two scores. The Clemson defense was not to be outdone, as Craig Crawford continued to improve. He had two sacks and caused a fumble. And William Perry started his weekly race towards a number of records. This sack broke Jim Stuckey's Clemson record for career sacks. It was Clemson's 23rd win over an ACC school in the last four years, an all-time record for a conference school as Clemson won the battle of the former Alabama coaches 54 to 21. Clemson had won 15 straight games in the month of October, but the last loss had come in 1980 at Raleigh, North Carolina, the site of the Tigers' sixth game of the season. NC State was coming off a tough loss to North Carolina, and they came out ready to atone for that loss. McIntosh and Evans combined for good early yardage, and the senior tailback scored an early TD for the pack to give them a 10-7 lead. No lead was safe in this track meet, however, as the Tigers came right back. Griffin followed blocks by Steve Reese and Andy Cheatham off the right side and scored standing up for a 14-10 Clemson lead. It looked like a pro game for the first three quarters. Mike Epley was hitting his passes. Here he hit Shelton Boyer for 22 yards. When it got close, Epley took it in himself. But most of the time, he handed off to the ricochet rabbit, Stacy Driver, who made like Mary Lou Retton for two straight Clemson scores from close range. In the fourth period, Henry Walls and Reggie Pleasant decided to make the Wolf Pack stop howling. Pleasant had a record tying four passes broken up in the game and intercepted this pass in the end zone to kill a drive. Michael Perry, the younger sibling of William, showed his ability to dominate a game as he forced a fumble and Jeff Wells pounced on it. State did not cross midfield in the second half as the Clemson defense rose to the occasion, giving the Tigers a hard-earned 35-34 victory. Clemson entered the Wake Forest game with the nation's top winning percentage over the last four seasons and a 23-game unbeaten streak at home, the longest in the nation. The Tigers wanted to increase those numbers on the first Saturday in November, and Demon Deacon coach Al Groh knew the Tigers would not need any help.
But Rory Holt contributed to the Tiger cause early as he fumbled this Dale Hatcher skyscraper. Six plays later, Mike Epley connected with future All-America Terrence Rulak for 25 yards and a touchdown. The 25th TD pass of Epley's career, a new Clemson record. Anthony Peretti entered the game in the second period, and he was hotter than Epley. Here, connecting with Jim Riggs, who shows the tight end position is in good hands for 1985. That led to another Clemson score. But the play to end all plays, the one that will make that's incredible in the coming months, took place in the second period. Harry Newsom was back to punt, but William Perry broke through the line and knocked up back Toby Cole back about five yards into the ball as it left Newsom's foot. Jeff Wells recovered the punt. William Perry had added something new to the stat book, block punts by using another person. Two plays later, Terrence Flagler followed Steve Reese and Pat Charleston to score from 14 yards out, and it was a 20 to nothing Clemson lead. Ray Williams put the icing on the cake as he scored on his first career carry from scrimmage on this deceptive end around. The Virginia Tech game was billed as a battle of defensive linemen. Outland Trophy winner Bruce Smith of the Gobblers and Washington Touchdown Club Lineman of the Year William Perry. While Michael Perry was looking on with interest at the publicity, he decided to take things into his own hands once the game started. The redshirt freshman made two quarterback sacks, three tackles for loss, and caused a fumble to lead all defenders for the day. It was a day for defense, so Clemson coach Danny Ford knew an early score might hold up. On the third play from scrimmage, Mike Epley launched the bomb to Rulak, and 66 yards later, Terrence was celebrating Clemson's 15th touchdown pass of the season, a new school record. Ray Williams put the game on ice with this replay of his Wake Forest run a 17-yarder for a score. But in the end, it was Michael Perry who made the difference in this game. Here, he causes Mark Cox to fumble with a key sack on a third down play. William Perry also made contributions. Here, he set a new ACC record for career tackles for loss. The Virginia Tech triumph was Clemson's final win of the season. Losses at Maryland and to arch rival South Carolina finished the Tigers' season at 7-4. The two season-ending losses could not put a damper on the accomplishments of this class of 1984, Clemson's finest group of seniors in history. Their accomplishments are truly worth reviewing. In 1981, they began their careers with a national championship something no other sport in Clemson history had accomplished. 
They defeated Georgia, North Carolina, and Nebraska, all top 10 clubs. The Nebraska win came in the Orange Bowl, and it clinched an undisputed national championship. The 1982 season brought a second straight ACC title and a number eight national ranking. The nine one and one record included another perfect season against ACC teams. The class of 84 had 37 wins overall and no other team in the history of the ACC accumulated more victories as a group. It also captured 25 wins over ACC teams more than any other conference class in history. The 37-6-2 record was the fourth best winning percentage in the nation for the time period. And 37 times Clemson was ranked in the top 20 of the Associated Press poll. It set all kinds of streak records, including a 13-game winning streak, a 25-game unbeaten streak at home, 20 straight wins over ACC teams. And they became the first Clemson class to be ranked in 13 consecutive wire service polls. The class also won three games against South Carolina. And 14 of the redshirt seniors were on the field for four victories over the state rival. This class also had a perfect 16-0 record against ACC teams from the Big Four. Truly, some of Clemson's greatest players in history played in this senior class. Mike Epley was a two-sport starter at Clemson. He entered his career as Clemson's all-time leader in touchdown passes and completion percentage. And no other Clemson quarterback in history started more games that resulted in Tiger victories. Dale Hatcher ended his career as Clemson's all-time leader in punting average with a 43.6 figure. He had more punts over 50 yards and more punts inside the 20 than any other Tiger. And most importantly, he had the best net punting figure in Clemson history and the third best figure in the nation in 1984. A William Perry comes along only once in a lifetime. He finished his career as the ACC's all-time leader in quarterback sacks and tackles for loss. He was named first team All-America for two seasons and in 1984 was named National Lineman of the Year by the Washington Touchdown Club. While all these players will be missed, there are many talented athletes returning to carry on the Clemson tradition of excellence. William's brother Michael broke all of his big brother's freshman records in 1984. Steve Berlin is an experienced tackle who should return to challenge opposing quarterbacks. Terrence Mack will be an all-conference candidate who can sack a quarterback or intercept his passes. Henry Walls, Eldridge Milton, and Keith Williams, all suffered through injury plague seasons in 1984, but should return healthy at the linebacker position in 1985. On offense, two all-conference performers will become All-America candidates at the midpoint of the 80s. Terrence Rulak is the most feared receiver in the ACC, as 30% of his receptions have gone for touchdowns. Steve Reese was the leading blocker on Clemson's offensive line, and he should pave the way for many talented running backs. Stacy Driver, Kenny Flowers, Steve Griffin, and Terrence Flagler, who combined for 81% of the rushing yardage in 1984, all will be back. And Clemson head coach Danny Ford will return. The Tiger Mentor has the fourth best winning percentage in America among active coaches. And he reached 50 career victories quicker than any other ACC coach in history. But most importantly, the intangibles that can make a difference in a season will be back. Clemson fans helped the Tigers to many victories over the last four years, and their enthusiasm will reach new heights in 1985 as they look forward to viewing their team on live television, following the Tigers in the ACC standings, and looking forward to a bowl opportunity. Where the blue